All right, so let's talk about R wave progression, which is an important part of ECG analysis. And R wave progression pertains to the precordial leads. So here we see the 12 leads of an ECG. In blue, we see the limb leads, and in red, we see the precordial leads. And the latter, they depict the electrical activity of the heart in the transverse plane, whereas the limb leads depict the electrical activity of the heart in the frontal plane. And so these precordial leads, we have V1 through V6. V1 is placed right parasternally, and V6 is placed in the left axilla. Now, one thing you should know about uh, the R wave progression is that it it's all about the QRS complexes, which are the electrical activity of ventricular depolarization. Now the ventricles, we have a left ventricle, a right ventricle, and we have an interventricular septum. And the first part to depolarize is the interventricular septum. And the direction of depolarization is from left to right. And the reason for that is that the septal fascicle, the nervous tissue that depolarizes the left ventricle, comes from the left bundle branch. This is important knowledge to understand why a left bundle branch blo block looks the way it does. Anyway, first thing is septal depolarization towards V1 and away from V6. And as a result, we see that the first deflection in the QRS complex is positive in V1 and this is a septal R wave, whereas the first deflection in V6 is negative, and this is a septal Q wave, which is all normal physiology. Then after the septum has depolarized, normally the left and right ventricle depolarize simultaneously. And the direction of depolarization goes from inside to outside. So from the endocardial side to the epicardial side. For the left ventricle, that is in this direction. And for the right ventricle, that is in this direction. So we have simultaneous opposing electrical forces. And since the left ventricle was way stronger than the right ventricle, normally the left ventricle wins. So the forces, net forces, are way stronger when you detect electrical activity right here, as in V6, and way less when you detect electrical activity right here, as in V1. And that is the basis for our wave progression, where as you go on from V1 through V6, these QRS complexes become progressively more positive. And normally, the transition where the QRS complex becomes net more positive than negative is in either V3 or V4. If the R wave progression is aberrant, um, this can either mean that there is early progression or late progression. So you may already have um, a net positive QRS complex in V1, or it may not become positive until V6. And there are several causes for this. Uh, which we'll discuss in a later video, but here's an example, actually a CT example, of a patient with uh, abnormal R-wave progression. So this is a CT view, this is the right side of the patient, this is the left side of the patient, and it's as if the patient is lying on his back with his feet towards us. And this is the right ventricle, left ventricle, interventricular septum, right atrium, left atrium, aorta. And let's face take a look at here lead V1, V2, V3. And what we see is that the QRS complex is already net positive in V1. So there is early progression, early transition, I should say. Now, why is that? Looking at the myocardium of the septum, this is normally a attenuating myocardium. But here, the lateral wall of the left ventricle, basal and mid segments, we see that subendocardially, there is a region that is dark, low attenuation. And this corresponds to a region of prior infarction. So this patient had an old lateral wall infarction. Now relate this region of infarction to lead V6 and lead V1. And you'll know that because there is infarction, there's tissue death, there's a loss of forces towards lead V6 and V5. And by the same rhetoric, there is a decrease in opposition of forces that go towards V1 and V2. So loss of forces in this way means less opposition of forces this way. And that's why the electrical activity detected in V1 and V2 in, during the QRS complex, during ventricular depolarization, is higher. So this is one of the causes of early transition. It's a lateral uh, 
infarction in the left ventricle. Other causes, for instance, may be right ventricular hypertrophy. Maybe a patient has chronic pulmonary uh, hypertension. Maybe a patient has a right ventricular strain due to pulmonary embolism. You will see early transitioning. Um, and if we talk about causes of, of late transitioning where the QRS complexes are predominantly negative over the entire uh, precordial leads. One of the causes for that uh, is, for instance, an anterior wall infarction where there is loss of forces anteriorly. Now, one thing to note is that you should always consider lead misplacement as a cause for aberrant R wave progression, and you should consider normal anatomical variation because the heart is a mediastinal structure. In most patients, it is rotated so that V3 and V4 is where the transition occurs, but in some patients, it's slightly rotated counterclockwise. In some patients, it's rotated more clockwise. This may be their um, congenital anatomy. It may be that they've had uh, surgery. Maybe they've had a right-sided lobectomy um, causing traction on the heart towards the right. So these are things to take into consideration when interpreting an ECG and seeing aberrant R-wave progression. Maybe this is part of this patient's anatomy, and that's why it's always good to take a look at previous ECGs and to take into consideration prior uh, medical history. So that's R-wave progression in a nutshell. Hope you enjoyed.